let's look at another development today. This is a government announcement of its quantum computing strategy. With me is the Industry Minister, Ed Husey, who is leading this. You've mm. described, and for our viewers who are tuning in and asking, what is quantum computing? You've said it's a game changer. Mm. Why, why do you see it in those terms as, as a game changer when it comes to not just tech? This has obviously got huge ramifications. Well, the, uh, the computational power of quantum computers, uh, it, it basically outstrips anything that, you know, what you're used to as a computer today can do. There are a lot of things that computers can do, but there are some really hard things that's just they don't have enough grunt to be able to do so. And in quantum computing terms, in very broad ways, you know, your current computers have an on and off switch, zeros and ones that are operated in ways in which they, they traffic the data through the system. Quantum computing has an on switch, an off switch, an on off switch at the same time. It's all in those states effectively, allowing it to process data huge amounts very quickly. So what that could do is open up, for instance, the discovery of, of new medicines way quicker, like we're talking potentially half a decade quicker than what we would do at the moment relying on AI in classic computers and at less cost. Um, uh, today we're at... Um, uh, Nomad uh, uh, Atomics out in uh, Canberra here, they, with their quantum sensing equipment, can detect new mineral deposits that eluded humans that could be billions of val value and they can do it from a plane, up high with the sensing yep. to determine differences in, in gravity that can make them think, OK, these are the likely deposits. The economic value of that to the country and if we get there first in some of this... Um, what it'll do for our industries, securing jobs, generating value for the economy, these technologies, massive, but we've got to get our act together on it. Well, on, on the medicine front, you, you mentioned that, and I, I guess we think back to how quickly yeah. mankind or humankind came up with the, the vaccines. Yes. Um, one of them, or a few of them led by women, so I should say, you know, this was a, yeah. a human endeavour, but the vaccines for COVID, when it comes to cancer, is, is quantum computing looking at things like, you know, cures for cancer. Potentially. And, and, and uh, we, we uh, have so much research talent in this country relative to the size of our population. The rest of the world really admires the talent we've got. We've been investing in this space since the late 50s and now it's time to turn that into something concrete and, and we're at that stage where we can and people want to. And so our national quantum strategy, the first time a government's done this, is designed to get get us organised so that uh, if we need to be able to turn to that power, that computational power, to discover new medicines or treatments for cancers and other things, that we've got the ability uh, to do so. How far away is it in terms of being able to be operational and yeah. these computers to be built? So depending on who you talk to, I mean, I, I sort of describe it this way, it's so close you can almost touch it. It's in, in a matter of years that if we get these fault-tolerant quantum computers, uh, that we will be able to uh, be able to access that and put it to work for industry, but also, importantly, for our AUKUS arrangements. The expectation is that we have the technological capability that we can bring to the table under Pillar 2 of AUKUS. Quantum will be a big, big part of that. Some of our existing Australian firms are already being sought after by some of our strategic partners because they recognise the value of what these firms are doing on Australian soil and they want to get them elsewhere. So what we've wanted to do with the National Reconstruction Fund, we've set aside a billion for critical technologies like quantum that could be potentially supported. So if we get our act together through the quantum strategy and all the work that it says we need to get done, we make the capital available and we invest in our people, we don't want firms to think that the only chance of success is to leave Australia. We need to be able to seize this moment for longer-term economic good of the country. Can we keep up with the likes of the United States, China and others on this? Not if we don't... Not if we are not organised. That's the big thing. If we don't signal the interest, we don't make the investment available and we don't organise ourselves, then we'll see that, that advantage fritter away. And so uh, we're determined as a government to... We said we're, we're elected on a, on a platform with the National Reconstruction Fund to transform and strengthen industries. That was a big thing. This is one example of an area where if we get it right, it'll, it'll be a big deal. And the, the weird thing, Kieran, is we often think with some of these things, oh, well, that's a, something that another country's got the capability to do and we'll leave it to them and then we'll just buy it back off them. 
we're actually at the point with the people and the talent and the money that we've got, um, if we get this right, we can be a world leader and we should. Well, we've had those opportunities before. <laughs> Our R&D, research and development uh, history is extraordinary. Yeah. You and I have discussed it before, whether it be from Wi-Fi to solar yeah. to, you know, there's an endless list of these yeah. great technologies that Australians have come up with but not commercialised. Yeah. How do you go about commercialising the gains that we make? Yeah, and that's uh, one of the one of the uh, pathways under this plan is to look at the R and D commercialisation of quantum technologies, uh, and we do need to to get better at uh, at that. It's not just a challenge that's confronting us. There are a lot of other countries that are trying to crack that as well of moving what's being thought about and worked on in the university environment out in the commercial realm. So we do need to do better and. Uh, our level of investment in R and D as is a it country, like consortiums, or consortiums between universities and private sector? Is that the sort of it, thing you look at? Yeah, some of it uh, needs to uh, look at that and how we get people thinking, particularly in a university concept about if they've got an idea, how will this translate in a commercial sense? How will we be able to produce or manufacture ultimately what they're thinking of? But the amount of money that we've got to invest in this area, relative, like we spent, we we invest in R&D as a proportion of GDP, about 1.8%, when the OECD average is three. We've got a lot of work to do. Yeah. Um, but if we do it, it's really important in terms of growing the economy and sharpening it and securing jobs long term. Yeah, super exciting stuff. Quantum computing and uh, the strategy launched today. Thanks so much for your time, Minister. Good on you. Thank you.